This program is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Hello and you're welcome to the last 2022 edition of Business Highlights on Trust TV, where we document the human story. On Business Highlights, we take you through some of the biggest economic and business developments of the week and how they affect the average Nigerian out there. My name is Chamun Dabeng, and I'll be your host. Now, as we prepare to move into 2023, there is a need to reflect on the soon-to-be past year. The economic world in 2022 was filled with ups and downs, and several sectors of the Nigerian economy suffered as a result of global inflationary pressures that were brought on by the Russia-Ukraine war, the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, forex challenges, insecurity, oil theft, and so much more. And we're going to be reviewing some of the effects, events for the year 2022 right after the break. Please stay with us. This program is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. You're welcome back to Business Highlights on Trust TV. And once again, my name is Chamon Dabeng. Now, since there was so much that went down during the year and we only have 30 minutes on the show, we're going to be focusing on few key issues today. And we're starting with Nigeria's inflationary pressures, which has stayed on an upward trajectory with each CPI getting higher than the next. Now, joining me in the studio today is business consultant and public affairs analyst Agaba Wilson. Agaba, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, 2022 has been a very interesting year. Oh, not, yes. It's not even interesting in a, in a necessarily good way, but it's just been a year to literally sit down and speculate. Now, what do you make of so many of the events that have gone on within 2022, especially within uh, the Nigerian economy? You know, the, the bird for 2022 was laid in 2020, the end of 2019, towards 2020, when things went out of control for the whole world. And uh, given our history and how we were doing at the time, I knew that um, it's going to be a turbulent year ahead of us from 2020, 2021, and 2022. Um, a lot of things visited us in uh, strange ways, though not so strange because of how we have structured our systems here, the level of governance, the patriotism of the citizenry, mm. the behavior and uh, orientation of the citizenry. So a lot of things um, were expected to happen, mm. yeah, some of them worse than we expected, mm. some of them in different dimension, uh, but in all, some of us are still alive, so we thank God. Uh, in all, we are still a nation, we thank, thank God. <laughs> in all, um, we, we still are not hearing bomb everywhere, mm -hmm. as it were some years ago. So some improvement has also been made. All right, so we don't digress too much. As we said, we're going to be taking a look at Nigeria's inflationary trends for the past one year. Yeah. Um, it's been on an increase monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at the 12 month series. Uh, let's see how it uh, started. Now if you take a look at it from uh, December, pardon me, uh, December 2021, it was a 15.63. Mm -hmm. And January 2020, you could actually see that there was a drop mm -hmm. moving from mm -hmm. 
63% to 15.6%. Mm. And then from February down to November, where we are today, there has been an upward trajectory mm. just going higher and higher. Now, looking at these figures, uh, what do you really make of it? Is it really a shocking thing to see Nigeria's inflationary trends keep trending upward? No, basically, uh, for me, I wasn't shocked because um, what causes inflation? When there is too much money in the system and then inflation on consumables is going to be higher if there are few goods to be purchased. And like I said earlier, starting from 2020 when the world economy shut down, production went down, logistics, that is the supply chain, was disrupted. And so we have very few goods in circulation. And then to cushion the effect of the lockdown, where people are no longer working, they need to earn money and eat and all of that, several governments around the world started doling out money to their citizens. Mm -hmm. Nigeria, for instance, we had a lot of federal government intervention, the COVID-19 home loan and we all of those. Things. So we were putting money in people's hands. Mm -hmm. But if you look at production, production was halted. Yeah. China seems to be the industrial hub for mm -hmm. manufacturing in the whole world. It is where the COVID-19 started. And even until today, they are still battling with it. And you see, the way the global supply chain works is that when one segment is disrupted, the impact is going to go from that particular edge segment till the final point. And before it starts all over again to recoup. recoup. So that is what happened. And because we have too much money in the system, chasing few goods, I'm willing to pay more than what I paid the other time just to have it. Mm -hmm. So the power to pay and the willingness to pay were there mm -hmm. for the few goods. So you can imagine what will happen then. Yeah, but when you say the power was there, I mean, we still have an issue with the cost of of things like the real, you know, the market realities out there. The prices are higher, mm -hmm. but purchasing power has been eroded. So you're now taking a look at um, Nigeria's uh, poverty level. You're taking a look at so many other things mm -hmm. that are being brought on by inflationary trends. So that power is not really there anymore. No, you see, when you say um, the capability to pay or the capacity to pay, uh, look, any economy, like Nigeria economy is worth about 440-something billion dollars. It doesn't mean that that money is shared for all of us. And even when you have something like per capita income being discussed, it doesn't mean that all of us have that amount of money in our account. But the sizable amount of people who have these resources residing with them are willing to pay more for this item. And all of us go to the same market. Because, come to think of it, if they say a bottle of uh, a drink is uh, 500 naira and there is no enough number of people to buy it, why would mm -hmm. the company keep mm -hmm. selling it at that rate? Mm -hmm. It means there are people buying it. So as much as you and I may not have enough fund in our hand, there are a sizable number of Nigerians that have this fund and are willing to pay more. And that is why the price of things keep going up. All right. All right, so we spoke to a few Nigerians out there uh, within the market, actually, to see what uh, the realities are, what they're really facing, and the reactions that Nigerians have actually given to them, that's the sellers themselves, to the price increase and how it has affected their own daily income. So let's take a look at that. The price of food stuff in the market have continued to skyrocket, with both sellers and buyers complaining bitterly. Many attributed this to inflation. Most of the food consumed by Nigerians, including rice, fish, and vegetable oil, are mostly imported. Local farmers were incapacitated due to activities of bandits in the northern parts of the country, which led to insufficient locally produced food. Traders at Akindeko Market in Oshobo, Oshun State, said the price of food stuff has gone up, resulting to low patronage by consumers. A bundle of every fish is now between 28,000 naira and 29,000 naira. A bundle of mackerel fish that was 12,000 naira some years ago is now 55,000 naira. Prices of items have multiplied by three to four times. It's beyond expectations. We only need God's intervention. Prices of food stuff have gone up. 
A bag of rice suddenly jumped from 32,000 naira to 42,000 naira. We are not making sales because people could not afford it. It is really affecting the business adversely. Government should help us to address the problem. Most people cannot afford fish nowadays. 1,000 naira fish is very small. Meanwhile, father, mother, children manage themselves with 200 naira for more. We beg government to make things easy for citizens. Kainde Pokwola and Ajagbe Bolaji said their new strategy is to only feed once or at most twice in a day. It's not necessary to eat rice every day. It's not necessary to eat bread every day. If I get yam, I will take it as a food. So that is advice for the people. Uh, everybody knows um, the country we are. So you just have to manage yourself. At least uh, the three uh, daily means that you're supposed to take, at least if you can take two, maybe morning and the night. The residents called on government to address inflation to make life bearable for them. Coming from there you have it coming from two different perspectives there from the sellers and also the buyers you have the residents coming out to speak and listening to the residents themselves it just gives you a complete image of how pathetic the situation is right now where you have people saying oh you don't have to eat three times a day maybe if you do it once or you do it twice then it should be okay just manage your pocket now what do you make of this i mean we're sitting down here and we're talking about uh, you know capabilities to buy certain things and you're also considering the purchasing power of nigeria out there. Now, let's not forget that NBS recently said that 133 million Nigerians are dimensionally poor. Yeah. Multi dimensionally poor, pardon me. And looking at that figure, it's already a very scary figure because Nigeria's population is a, over, a little over 200 million. You know, uh, we don't have much time, so I'm going to try to uh, stay as uh, closely to the topic as possible. Uh, we have a problem of income distribution, all right? There are a tangible number of people with a lot of money that they cannot do much with. And there are a large number of people that have close to nothing. And this is a segment that we have seen in this, our interview, all right? So, and we all know the causes of all this bad governance and all of that stemming from the incessant corruption mm -hmm. or the institutionalized corruption that we have in the country, where a few people take so much that they can never exhaust in their generation, in all of their generation. And the, you know, you know, when the Naira was redesigned, what started happening, uh, a lot of money stuck in places that has gone bad and all of that. So this is one of the very, uh, uh, obvious effect of corruption mm -hmm. on the country. There is money in some segment. There are a lot of people languishing in poverty. And like they mentioned in the uh, this thing, you know, much of our food, uh, grains, and the rest of them are produced in the northeast and the northwest, and then the north central supports a lot with all of that. But what you saw in the last uh, one decade uh, being the destabilization of the northeast, and then it spread to the northwest, mm -hmm. and then the North Central in recent time with banditry and all of that, people have been dispossessed of their land. Even if you farm, you can't go out, back out there to uh, harvest. And I had news of uh, people who have to pay taxes to yeah. bandits to be able to harvest. The cost gets added to the price of, of their goods. And when they sell it, they sell higher. It gets to the market, it's at a higher level and all of that. So we have a serious problem of income redistribution. Mm -hmm. and. Um, one way to combat that will be for us to take the fight against corruption seriously. We may not be able to eliminate it at once, but we can do a drastic uh, reduction in the corruption, and then some of these things will naturally give way. All right, so um, as we said earlier on, as many of us actually know, the Nigerian economy has suffered so many shocks. I mentioned a few uh, earlier on from insecurity, the Russia-Ukraine war, and so many other you know, issues and challenges that the country is facing now. Now, we've seen the Central Bank of Nigeria create and implement policies that are supposed to help curb some of these shocks or control some of these shocks. So we're going to be getting into that right after the break. Don't go anywhere.
This program is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. You're welcome back. My name is Chamon Dabeng and you're watching Business Highlights on Trust TV. I'm still here with Agaba Wilson Agaba and he is a business consultant and public affairs analyst. And we're just taking a look at uh, Nigeria's economy so far throughout the year of 2022. We've taken a look at Nigeria's inflationary trends and we want to, you know, just take a look at CBN policies that were implemented, created and implemented in order to sort of curb some of the economic shocks that Nigeria had suffered. So we've seen the Monetary Policy Committee increase the NPR four consecutive times. We've seen the RT200 that was in, uh, introduced this year to sort of help out with our forex uh, problems and uh, the new Naira, the Naira redesign, pardon me, and you know, just a couple of other uh, policies that have been designed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Wilson, what do you think about these policies? How well have they worked in sort of handling Nigeria's uh, economic issues? You know, usually when there is uh, an inflation in the economy and you want to reduce it, the first go-to tactics is to mop up money from yes. the system. And that's what they try to do by hiking the NPR, which eventually will lead to an increase in interest rate, thereby discouraging borrowing and thereby reducing uh, money available to the uh, users. And then another thing they could have done is the open market operation, buying back their, I mean, selling more treasury bill, you know, getting more debts, causing people to bring what they have to you. Mm -hmm. But most of that didn't work because, like the CBN, um, uh, CBN um, governor said when they introduced the redesigning of the Naira, that uh, more than 80% of the currency that were supposed to be in circulation were not in the financial system. So it takes the control of the money in your system out of your hand when mm -hmm. they are not in the financial system. Okay, I think that is what informed the redesigning of the Naira mm -hmm. to force those who have stored it outside the system to bring it into the system. Mm -hmm. The advantage of that is that the money is now available to the financial system. Mind you, the job of the financial system is to pull money from places of surplus and make it available to places of need. So let's say I have a project that needs 10 billion naira, and there are about 1,000 people with 1 million naira mm -hmm. in their houses and or in their accounts, you need it and to they are not using the it. Yes, if it's in the bank, the bank can pull this money together mm -hmm. and give it to me. Mm -hmm. I start that economic activity, employ more hands, mm -hmm. pay more taxes to the uh, the government, and those people also pay taxes. They also have money to feed their family mm -hmm. and all of that. So it goes around, and those people who have the money gets to earn from it. The bank gets to earn from it, and also recruit more people you know so this is how it goes around but when the money is inside somebody's suck away or tank or <laughs> wherever it is buried wherever it, is, it is not available for the economy you know <laughs> so i think that's what led to that yes. and the other leg of the the policy which places a withdrawal limit is to stop the reason why we are redesigning from happening all over again, mm -hmm. all right? So if you place limit, it becomes difficult for people to take it out mm -hmm. and then keep it in their houses. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have been encouraging banking. More people should move into the financial system, yes. which led to the creation mm -hmm. of the e-Naira and all of that. So to a large extent, this will help the, uh, help the government to fix this kind of situation in the coming years if properly implemented, although you can see that uh, we are already fighting mm -hmm. some of the policies. Mm -hmm. We have uh, increased the limit of withdrawal. We have uh, also, the Senate has also started asking for the extension 
of the, this thing. You know, another side of it was to curb issues of election rigging through yes. vote buying and all of mm -hmm. that. But the Senate is trying to help us jump that by saying we should extend the deadline to June 31st. Yes. It was also to make sure that we remove the incentive for bandits and all those kidnappers who have been kidnapping people and collecting cash. So it's either you bring the cash to the system and they use it to trace you, or you keep the cash where it is and you have been dispossessed of uh, purchasing power. Thereby you can't fund more insecurities and all of that. But you can see the system is fighting itself. Mm -hmm. So um, those policies were well intended. Uh, implementation is what I have pointed out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, implementation is usually a problem because the people who should actually drive it end up fighting it. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the uh, issues around the CBM policies. All right, so I want to take a quick look at some of the uh, Monetary Policy Committee decisions that have gone on uh, for the past year. Now, of course, we can't take a look at every single month yeah. uh, that it has happened, but we'll start off from May, which is when they actually implemented the first increase after two years, moving it from 11.5 to 13 uh, yeah. percent. And, you know, the next thing in July, there was also another increase. Yeah. And then September, there was another increase. And November, there was another increase, and which is the last one yeah. that we're looking at. So it seems that with each increase it's sort of you know um following inflationary trends yes so the higher the inflation the higher the npr becomes yes. and we've also seen a recent increase in the cr uh the crr pardon me Cash moving reserve from, exactly yeah. moving to uh, i think about 32.5 percent yes. uh looking at these increases at the trends or the manner the patterns so far that the cbn has actually followed mm. uh, are we anticipating another increase come january because that's going to be the first for the year 2023 i think that whether that increase will happen or not would depend so much on how well we implement the current Naira design, redesign and uh, withdrawal limit and see how it affects the economy. If um, it begins to bring down the inflation rate, then they are not likely to improve it. Because if you see, when you hike the cash reserve ratio, you are basically telling the banks that this amount of money must always be reserved in your own account. And what does that do? It limits them from borrowing it out. Mm -hmm. So it's all in the, uh, in the intent to reduce the capacity of the banks to borrow to people and to make borrowing less attractive. But it also has another leg, which is if you make borrowing less attractive, it means cost of capital becomes higher for businesses and then it will stifle production. Mm -hmm. And when production is stifled, what happens? Less goods being chased by the remaining amount of uh, cash in the system. And then, of course, price keep going up. You know, so they have to have a multi-pronged uh, approach to this issue. I don't uh, envisage an increase in January or in the first quarter, but I think that they are going to monitor how the whole policy that they have put out this year behaves in the first one quarter before they will now uh, mm. think of adjusting it. All right. Um, so my final question really is still on uh, the, the Monetary Policy Committee. Um, you now, we've seen them increase the NPR on a consecutive basis. Do you think that after the first increase, which was made in May from 11.5 yeah. to 13 percent, should the CBN have waited a little bit to see how uh, the new policy would have reacted to Nigeria's economy? Give it a little bit of time to sort of permeate and actually do something before moving on to the next increase. Uh, I think the <laughs> when the first increment was done, you look at the inflation rate, it was still flying. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need no soothsayer to tell you that this didn't work. So uh, they went ahead and increased again. One would do that, actually. I don't know the data before them when they take their decision. I don't know the level of research that goes into it, but I want to believe that at the Apex Bank, uh, they would have done a lot in that dimension. But you want to look at every situation. Where is the problem coming from? You would have done some data analysis to see which one is having the highest impact on this problem. And so let's try to bring it down. Maybe they saw that uh, the monetary policy rate had the highest impact. And so as a result, they kept uh, increasing it and then working on cash reserve ratio. Whereas there are other minor issues that could have an untold impact mm -hmm. on inflation that... Um, cannot be solved by those monetary uh, indicators. 
uh, but time will not permit us to start going into that. And I'm sure the committee also know that. So they would have looked into all those things mm -hmm. holistically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that the orientation of the, the actors of our economy has a lot to do with the performance of our economy at mm -hmm. any time. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that generate the indicators that you measure and all of that. So when you keep focusing on the indicator and you don't focus on changing it from the root, no matter right. what you cut down, it's not going to affect the end result. All right. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. There's been so much that has actually gone on in the Nigerian economy and so much that we still need to take note of and so much that we're hoping that the government is actually reviewing, taking a look at and, you know, thinking about making these changes come 2023 because it's a fresh year. So of we're course. hoping for a fresh economy. It's a new blank sheet for us yes, to write new is. things on top. <laughs> it well, brings we, hope. Yes. Well, we've come to the end of our show for today, and I would like to thank my guests in the studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Wilson, for being a part of the show. And to our viewers out there, thank you so much for watching. On behalf of Trust Television, I am wishing you a happy new year in advance. I hope that, you know, like we said, it's a new slate, it's a new beginning, and I hope that you take advantage of that. Well, my name is Chamun Dabeng. Until next year, please do take care. This program is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria.